wow, th this is great. Mm -hmm. uh, when I when I heard that we were going to, to follow Linus and Dirk, uh, I was actually really excited because I knew that the content would be good, but then we'd also have a full crowd, a full audience, and that's certainly the case, so I appreciate that. Um, so we're gonna talk a bit today about uh, DLT 2.0 and um, why we believe that, that we're there. Uh, but first, as some of you may know me, I'm pretty sure that most of you don't know who De Hedera is. So I'm gonna spend literally just a couple of minutes giving you a bit of a background, telling you a bit about my journey here and how I came to, to believe in, in, our <clears throat> in the organization and, and in Dr. Baird. Uh, and then I'm gonna turn it over to him to again tell us a little bit about uh, DLT 2.0. So our, our mission, our vision is to create the 100 year network. And I have firmly come to believe that that is our, that, that that is our a potential future. Uh, I just hope it's not actually in my lifespan. Um, so it was about 14 months ago when I was with an organization called Wipro. And uh, I, someone came to me from the organization and said, can you help this company called Hedera with their open source strategy? And it turns out that Wipro is an actual governing council member of Hedera. I didn't know that at the time, but I, and <clears throat> they told me a little bit about it, and what I knew about Web3 at that time was, was really, the headlines were all about the crypto winner. We're about something called, this group of people called the Board Ape Yacht Club, about FTX and, and Sam Bankman Freed. So I was really, really skeptical. Um, but the technology was really intriguing. So I, I, I dove in, and <clears throat> It was a few months later that when we were at a council meeting in Santa Clara, California, that I realized that I was sitting in a group of probably 80 of the smartest people that I have ever met in my life. And that was really, really exciting to me. I also began to realize that there were three core foundational elements of Hedera that resonated to me. And that was the belief in open source best practices embodied in transparency and meritocracy. That was the fact that we are the lowest carbon impact blockchain today, and that we have a really engaged group of 31 governing council members. This is 32, sorry. Um, this was really, really, really important to me. So when they actually came to me and asked if I wanted to be the chief open source officer, I gave an enthusiastic yes. So here we are, it's about five months later. I've been, sorry, six months later. And I, I am truly privileged to be able to create and lead a group of, of Web3 and Web2 open source experts and to work with our key partner, Swirls Labs, where most of the creators of the, or builders of the original protocol and our key development and marketing partner reside today to grow an ecosystem of world-class builders of applications on our network. Um, <clears throat> but to be successful, we know that we need to, and to be able to really support our council members, our ecosystem partners, and our network users, we have to be a, a complete part, we have to be deeply embedded in the shared innovation economy. And for us, that means that you'll see us as active contributors to projects like, oops. <laughs> you'll see us as active contributors in projects like the Open Wallet Foundation, like Hyperledger, OpenSSF, and many others to help elevate the, the whole industry and help move it forward. So Lehman, let me turn it over to you. Um, mm -hmm. Are we in DLT 2.0? What, what does that actually mean? What's the impact? Excellent question. And you know what? The real question isn't just, oh, it's the future of blockchain, the next generation of blockchain. The real question is why blockchain anyway? What, what use is this of any sort? Is this just hype? Right. We just heard about hype in the previous talk. <laughs> is it just hype or is there something here that makes the world better in a way that just a database running on a server doesn't? Mm -hmm. And that's really what we're talking about. So this is the future of blockchain, you know, DLT 2.0, but it's also why DLT in the first place. And that's what we need to talk about. Okay. So let's talk about that. I love, Go for I love it. what you said. So let's talk about that. What is the future of <laughs> um, blockchain, DLT? A distributed ledger technology, another name for it. And uh, what are the use cases being built on it right now? Not talking about hype of someday we'll do something. I mean, right now, as we speak, what is being done on it? 
that could not be done just as well on a database running on a single server. What is the whole point of this? This is all open source software, but is it even useful open source software? That's the question. So let's talk about that. So in Hedera, what we have is a, is a DLT, a blockchain. It's very fast. We can do 10,000 TPS transactions per second right now. We are used far more than anybody else in the world. We're doing over 1,000 a second, far more than anyone else is doing right now. It's also extremely secure, asynchronous, Byzantine fault tolerant. That gets into the math. That's the fun part. Uh, and then other things, very stable, really good governance. And we should talk more about that. Uh, and then sustainability. It's the greenest uh, blockchain. Uh, but of course, that doesn't matter if blockchains aren't useful in the first place, if DLTs aren't even useful. Uh, but we do have a very, very low carbon footprint. So here are some of the major blockchains, including the Visa credit card down there in the middle. Uh, the carbon footprint of Visa is a thousand times what we are. And other, other ledgers are also huge multiples of the amount of carbon footprint to do one transaction. So if you do one transaction on, on this ledger, you are using only a thousandth of the energy that you would using your Visa card. And then, of course, you have something like Bitcoin. It's up to close to a, a billion. Uh, yeah, it's a lot more. So this is very green. And so this came from a UCL study, University College of London study, that showed that it was the greenest of all the, the ledgers that they looked at. And then we actually buy carbon credits to make that um, carbon neutral, and then a little bit more to be carbon negative. So it's very green. There's a huge ecosystem built on it. And so it has been useful for these use cases. And that's what's the important thing. What are the use cases? Mm -hmm. How can people actually use this thing to accomplish something in the real world? So let's start with Avery Dennison. You may know them as the people that make labels. And it's not just stickers, it's also RFID tags and QR codes that then allow them to track things through supply chains. And what you may not know is that Avery Dennison tracks billions of objects right now and have been for years. Billions of objects going through supply chains. And they are now starting to do it on the DLT, on Hedera. Why would they do that? What's the advantage of that? Why not just have a server somewhere? There's a number of advantages. If you do it on a DLT, then you have the trust that you're never going to go back and cook the books and change anything. It guarantees that. And you have a guarantee that when people look at your books, that everybody is seeing the same thing. You don't tell one person one thing and then tell someone else something contradictory. When it's on a ledger, it's visible to the entire world, and you can't, you can't do this uh, two-faced thing where you're duplicitous. This is what ledgers bring. So if you can run an application on a single server on a database, and you trust the person running the database, then you don't need a DLT. But if you really want to have true trust, you don't want to ever have to trust a single person. And this is what DLTs are for. So Avery Dennison is doing this. They are tracking things on the chain uh, over a thousand times a second. They do a transaction on Hedera. Uh, last I saw it was 1,700 per second. Just crazy amounts. Many, many billions of transactions have done on Hedera, far more than any other ledger. And they're doing this to track the entire, block uh, the entire uh, supply chain, the entire provenance, so the history of an object, and tracking things like what was the carbon footprint at each point? So you have this immutable record that no one can ever go back and change that's giving the carbon footprint at every step along the way, and you know that what you're telling the public is the same as what you're telling the regulators and the same that you're telling the auditors that are checking you. You're guaranteed that you're telling everyone the same thing and that the auditors are auditing the same thing that the public sees. And then when people know what their carbon footprint is, they can go buy carbon credits to offset it. And in fact, other people are tokenizing carbon credits on Hedera and then creating marketplaces where this can then interact with that. They're creating APIs and almost a marketplace of, of um, apps is what Avery Dennison is doing through their Atma project. And so this is a way that they are bringing real efficiency and even new capabilities they didn't have before that you really wouldn't trust as much if it were just a single server running a database. This is where blockchains or DLTs actually make a difference. And they're doing it right now. And they believe that customers um, want this enough that it impacts their bottom line. It's actually a useful thing. And it makes the world more trustworthy. Similarly, OneSpan is doing this with documents. Signatures on documents and keeping track of the document and time stamping a document so that you know for sure that this document was signed on a certain date. And it will not be able to be broken. This chain of hashes 
SHA-384, which we believe is post-quantum, means that even quantum computers won't be able to break that chain in the future. And so when you sign your document, you can have a record that it existed on this date, every bit of it is exactly what you're claiming, and you can never go back and change it. You can't go cook the books. Again, you couldn't do that with a single server unless you had 100% trust in the person running that server, and you trusted them to never be hacked. Of course, no one's ever hacked, so it's not a problem. <laughs> but you, you can do that. And so one span is doing this right now. And they're doing this on Hedera. But it's, again, a place where it makes a difference and gives you trust that you wouldn't have without a ledger. Just using a database on a single server wouldn't do it. It's bringing something new. And why did they do this? What well, they really liked was the low and predictable fees. So anytime you store one of these pieces of information on Hedera, it is a tenth of a cent. It's a one thousandth of a US dollar. And the price of the cryptocurrency can go up and down wildly, but your, price, your cost is still exactly a one thousandth of a US dollar. It's independent of the fluctuations of the cryptocurrency price. It's predictable. And when you're doing something important, you want to be able to predict your costs. And that was important. And then scalable was important. Being able to go to 10,000 TPS just in a single shard, and we can go to multiple shards and go to unlimited TPS uh, as, it, as it ramps up. This was important. And then, of course, being able to uh, be secure for the future. And the chain of hashes is actually unusually large, uh, 384 rather than 256, just so that it is post-quantum. Uh, so this is something that appealed to them and why they decided to build on it. And that's why they're running right now. Aberdeen is democratizing finance. They are bringing finance to ordinary people. This is a big deal. There is finance in the fintech world, investments available to billionaires that are not available to us. They have the ability to invest in things and they can pay high fees and there are limits. You have to have a certain net, asset, net worth before they even let you invest. And it is slow and there are intermediaries that are taking their cuts and Aberdeen is getting rid of all that. What they're doing is using this ledger to allow you to do financial transactions very fast without the middleman and very cheap, which means they can open it up to ordinary people, small investors. And so they are bringing this to the world. They have um, a $20 billion, I think it is, uh, money market fund that they manage, and they're now opening this up to ordinary investors through tokenizing on the ledger. So we're not talking about pictures of monkeys <laughs> being turned into tokens, which is just, I don't know what that means. <laughs> we're talking about actual real things, money market funds, and being opened up to people that didn't have access to it before. And instead of taking a day to settle and, and um, you, know, you go through a broker and then you have to do the trades and you have to settle, instead of taking a day to do all that, it's all done in a few seconds. And you can guarantee that it's true and you can watch what's happening and verify it yourself. You don't get that with normal markets. They're bringing the world of finance to the ordinary people. This is a big deal. This is part of the transition that ledgers are making possible. And it is all on open source software and it is with the ethos of bringing to ordinary people what is currently the domain of only some people. That's what it's about. And then you have Mondelez is doing customer engagement. They're doing coupons and customer payments and uh, ways of engaging with their customers, even doing funding and settling and all sorts of things in the supply chain, but reaching out to their customers. They also like the low and predictable fees. They like that we had t fungible and non-fungible tokens and those are also very cheap and they have interesting features you don't see elsewhere. And they're doing all of this. I'm very excited about that, but you might say, well, who is Mondelez? I've never heard of them. Ah, yes, well, you might not have, but you might have heard of their brands. Oreo cookies and Ritz crackers and Toblerone chocolate and all those other names on this chart, that's Mondelez. And Mondelez <coughs> is doing this for customer engagement and they say it makes a huge impact. And then we have Equity Lab. I love this. We talked about the, the AI hype. And like every hype cycle, it, many things are overhyped, including all of humanity will be dead in 10 years because of AI. And AI will you know, eliminate all of our jobs. Okay, that's all hype. But there is going to be useful things with AI. But we have to be able to trust it. And so they're doing all of this thing on the supply chain of what training data trained your model. And they're doing a climate GPT model and improving the provenance of the data. And it can track just like we would had physical supply chains, they can track software supply chains. Somebody asked me yesterday, hey, how can we do software supply chains? And we said, hey, Equity Lab, go talk to them. They're doing it right now on training models and what training data and having the history of that. 
Okay, so these are just some of the things that are being done right now. It is an interesting future, and I would love to talk with you all more about it. So thank you very much, Lehman, really appreciate that. So what my takeaway from this is that DLT 2.0 is about practical, functional use cases. Yes. Is that fair? Functional, real world use cases that actually matter. Yes, okay. not just pictures of monkeys. All right. All Thanks right. a lot. Thank you all very much. Bye-bye. <laughs>